Shalom, Yasharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the few Akwath that are listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled The Kingdom is Closer Than You Think. All right, because we see all the things happening across the four corners of the earth. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The wars and rumours of wars, the uproars of the people, um, you know, uh, the inflation, hyperinflation, you know, the love of many waxing cold, you know, the, the great awakening, you know, you've got, you got so many things happening, man. The, the, you know, the wicked being revealed, all right? So it's very clear that we are in that time now, you know? It's hard to say that that we can see another 50 years, another 100 years, another 25 years, even another 10 years. Very hard to say that there could be another 10 years here in Esau Edom's kingdom. All right. The, the, look, man, the kingdom of heaven is closer than you think. And to be honest, it takes faith to believe that. Because, you know, you, you say that to someone in the world and they, 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 they pretty much are under the, the spell of, yeah, I'm still going to be able to have me, you know, have a family, grow into old age, start my pension and whatnot. All right. But but look, man, the time is short. OK, look at everything that's going on around you, man. Wake up and smell the coffee, for goodness sake. All right. And, you know, uh, the kingdom is everything we've been waiting for. You know, we've been suffering here in Esau, Edom's kingdom as slaves. We are still yet this day. In our captivity, pursuant to Baruch chapter 3 and 8. Hold on. So lucky I'm very thirsty tonight. Alright. You know, we are still yet this day in our captivity. You know. And at this point, really and truly, we need salvation, man. You know, we are sick beyond healing. We are mentally, physically and spiritually destroyed as a people. All right. You know, we're, we're, we're through, man. And this is why we need, this is why we pray that we're part of the hopeful elect so that Yahweh Shai, when he returns, can come and redeem us and save us from this living nightmare, man. All right. But, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're seeing things uh, with your spiritual eye, you'll be able to see that, you know, Time is short for these devils, ultimately. And, we're, you know, we got next, Lord willing. All right, so without further ado, I don't want to make this too long and drawn out. Um, let's get to the precepts. Matthew 24 and 21. And it reads, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not seen since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall come. Right, because we we are heading into the worst imaginable time in history. All right, we are heading into that time right now. Okay, and you see a lot of people don't see that they don't recognize it, they don't understand it. But you see, they're gonna understand it and they're gonna know once it's already too late. You know, but but you know. Um, that's why we should be grateful that we've been given this wisdom, knowledge and understanding, man. Because we can see through the spiritual eye that these things are around the corner. Alright, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So yeah, you've got the Heavenly Father speeding up time, shortening the days. So that, you know, we... Uh, this thing can advance quicker because uh we you know when you uh wake up to this truth and who you are and the deeper you get the more you just hate working 
in this wicked society, working for these devils, you know, and you're still barely scraping the pot, you know, got crumbs or, you you know, you get money, but your, your money is being put in a bag full of holes, sort of thing, man, you know, and uh, you're seeing the prosperity of the wicked, you know, you're, you're, you're suffering, you're in hell right now, you're fighting your flesh, and so many different things, man, so, you know, the Lord, he's, he's uh, shortening the days, man, because he knows that, um, you know, we're, we're tired of it, man. Those who sincerely are, you know, calling upon your how about Shem we're, we're, we're tired of this, uh, this way of life, man. You know, we're tired of being in these weak, in these weak bodies, you know, uh, having various different health issues or whatever it is, financial spiritual whatever man like you know just just suffering okay being in hell which is esau edom's kingdom all right so you know uh look at 2020 to 2022 how fast those two years went by even this month of november man you know i believe it's going to be so it's 11.42 where I'm at now, so in like 22 minutes. It's got to be the 20th of November, man. You know, the Lord is really speeding up um, the time, even though it may not seem like that. Trust me, man, things are going on in the heavens that uh, you don't know of, okay? And the heavens literally... Uh... <sighs> Excuse me. Whatever happens in the physical realm was already uh, established in the heavens, you know. So, yeah, man. <laughs> it's crazy, man. We're almost home. All right. Let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60 and we'll start at verse 15 and it reads whereas thou has been forsaken and hated and who has been forsaken and hated none other than you so-called Negroes Latinos and Native Americans man doesn't matter what part of the world you're in you are always uh, uh, forsaken and, hate and hated all right just because you are son of the living power that's really what it is so uh, really and truly, it's it's uh, it's envy, okay. So that no man went through thee. I'll make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Yeah, so you're gonna, you know, us hopeful elect, and then followed by, you know, the rest of the nation of Israel. We're gonna go from rags to riches, literally, man. All right, you know, the Lord said He's gonna make us an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations, all right? Because we ain't going to die, you see? Verse 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that I, the Lord, am thy saviour and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. So, you know, we're going to know that Shehaobah Shem Shai. That's brought this salvation And then the rest of Israel is going to know in the kingdom And the same with uh, the other nations Alright uh, But what it means this What this verse means pretty much is You know in the kingdom of heaven We're going to be babied man You know we, we ain't going to have to do shit Because we're going to have the servants and handmaids Who are um, So lucky I just lost my trail of thought completely it's been, it's been a long day. Um, let, let me go and read it again. Yeah. Um, so verse 16. You know, we're going to be pampered. You know, we're going to be babied, man. Uh, we're going to have the other nations working under us. As servants and handmaids, slaves. You know, so, so you know, pretty much like how when a baby is born and is young, it doesn't actually do anything. It gets catered to. Well, we're getting ready to be catered to, man. <laughs> All right. That's the glory that's coming. Verse 17. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. 
I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. All right. <sighs> So our kingdom is going to be made of, you know, various different precious metals and fine gold and you name it, man. It's going to be beautiful. Read Tobit 13 and 16. All right. Verse um, 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting no destruction within my borders, but thou hast called thy walls but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. You know, so, so these other nations ain't going to come up against us again. And if they do, they're going to fail utterly and they're going to be destroyed. All right. Because these nations ain't going to learn war no more after World War Three. All right. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness that the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall uh, be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy power, in uh, thy power, thy glory. Yeah, and um, what this means is, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean literally there ain't going to be no more sun and no more moon. That 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 will always be there. All right. Um, but what this is talking about is like. You know, um, the world is going to be filled with the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the Lord. And that is going to shine through. Uh, and, and especially, well, on our people, not even especially on the Israelites. Because they're, every single Israelite is going to have the law, statutes and commandments written in their inward part. Alright? And, you know, so, so that light is always going to be shining. Alright? This wisdom, this knowledge is, is going to, you know, be... Propelled throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay. Verse 20. Thou shalt no more go down. Neither shall thy moon. Uh, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. So again it's it's an allegory. It's, it's metaphorically speaking. Alright. You know. This wisdom of the heavenly father is going to be. Uh, 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 it's, 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 first of all, it's going to be within us, and it's going to be pro projected all throughout the earth. Okay. Verse twenty-one: Thy people also shall be all righteous; they shall inherit the land forever. Uh, the branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. All right. So you see. We ain't gonna, um, we ain't going into captivity again, man. You know, we're gonna, uh, what does it say in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one? Righteousness is immortal. So, if we ain't never going off, we ain't never gonna upset the Lord, and therefore, He ain't gonna have to punish us. Death being one of those punishments, and, and we're gonna live forever. All right? And that's also gonna glorify the Lord. You see? Verse 22 A little one shall become a thousand. You know, be fruitful and multiply. All right. Or just to put it plain and simple, having sex. Okay. A little one, because there's going to be loads of that in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. To bring back the two thirds. Um, and yes, a man can do with more than one woman. All right. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. And he's hastening it now. That's why the things, you know, are happening at pretty much warp speed. There's so much going on. You miss an hour. You miss a minute. You miss a day of not checking that news. And you've already missed like 10 different things that's going on around the world. And they've got things that they ain't telling you on top of that. So, you know. Um... There's a lot going on, man. But this is all prophecy and, and it's showing that we are uh, um, at the end. All right. You know, all these things that we preach about will come to pass very, very shortly. And it's going to be beautiful, man. You know, we, we've been waiting for this. The prophets of old, which are back today, have been waiting for this moment all their lives, man. We're finally here. Okay. 
Excuse me. Let's go to uh, Luke. Lord willing, this be edifying, man. I had a long day. I hate doing lessons when I'm tired, but you know, this work got to be done, man. This word got to go out, okay? The Lord willing, this be edifying. This is Luke 18 and 7. And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So yeah, even though it seems like the Lord is bearing long with us, we know ultimately the Lord is bound by his word. He could have been destroyed, these Edomites, time ago, man. But we got prophet. it got to happen according to prophecy. You know, Joel 2... Um, Reve uh, Revelation 1 and 7 Revelation 13 and 16 You know, all these things, man Amos 8 and 11 You know, all these prophecies have to happen Alright Because the Heavenly Father is bound by His word But, he look, man the, <laughs> yeah, the Yahweh Shai, if anything he, he, he wants it to happen more than anyone else, man You know So we just gotta we, we just gotta suffer patiently pretty much. Okay, understanding that this soon is soon over with, man. And also understanding that yeah, we're suffering now, but what we, we, the things we're doing now on this side is gonna lead us to you know never suffer again and and, and, and to be you know constantly uh being righteous. Alright? And damn my eyes can't pick this up, I don't know where Romans is here we are. This is Romans Chapter 9 And verse 22 What if the Most High Willing to show his wrath And to make his power known Endured with much long suffering The vessels of wrath Fitted to destruction and That's Esau Edom The so called white man He's the fit, uh, He is the, uh, the The vessel of wrath Fitted to destruction Alright And the Heavenly Father Is enduring with much long suffering So no one could want The day of the Lord more than Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai? All right. They can't wait, man. Trust me. You think we can't wait? They can't wait. Okay. It says uh, he endured, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known. All right. He endured. With much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fit to destruction. To destruction, okay. So trust me, man. The day of the Lord is burning in all our hearts, including our uh, Lord and Savior Yahushai. You know, we can't wait for this day to come. Even the angels be saying the same thing. Those spirits that are now, you know, Israelite spirits that are now in the spirit world, who died on this side, they they're asking, they're in the right frame of mind now, and they're like, you know. Um, it's a lucky man I just lost my trail of thought again do, Please do forgive me man You know But um, Yeah So the Heavenly Father he, He's burning for this day to come Alright So we just need to su suffer patiently We're almost there man We can We can pretty much taste the finish line at this point Okay He that endureth until the end The same shall be saved Okay, let's close out here in Isaiah chapter 63 and we'll start at the top. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? This that is glorious in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. All right, so this is the house shine. All right, he's going to. Uh, terrorize the land of Edom Which the modern day land of Edom Is uh, um, 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 You know Babylon the Great A.K.A. America And how is the Lord coming back? He's coming back on those chariots Those so called UFOs Alright Verse 2 Wherefore thou art red in thine Art thou red in thine apparel And thine garment Like him that treadeth in the wine fat So once again this is an allegory Talking about how uh, how much death and killing and destruction this Lord is bringing to this place, man. All right. Isaiah 66 says that the slain of the Lord shall be many. So don't think that when your house shall return, it's going to be all cookies, ice cream, sweets and, 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 and chocolate, man. All right. He's coming with that great wrath, that, that heavenly wrath, you know, that wrath of his heavenly father. And, you know, Hebrews 10 and 31 is a fearful thing 
to fall into the hands of the living power, right? Isaiah 63 and 3, I have, hodden, I have trodden the, the winepress alone and uh, a lot of the people there was none with. And Sorry, and of the people there was none with. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stay my ra my raiment. So you see, once again, it's an allegory going into how much death is Yahweh Shai is going to shed. All right. Look, the most High has no respect of persons, man. So you either get right or get left. That's that's pretty much the best, most simplest way to put it to you. Get right or get left, man. Uh, and we'll close out here in verse 4. And it reads, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeems come. So look, man, if anyone is waiting for this day to come, it's Yahweh Shai himself, man. The day of vengeance in it is in his heart, it's in his mind, it's always playing on his mind. And he's waiting for the Heavenly Father to give us all clear, man. Alright. Anyways, that's all I got for tonight. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. So lucky for the moments when my mind went blank. You know, but Lord willing, this lesson has been edifying and beneficial to the elect of the nation of Israel. Until next time, I say Shalom.